Buck Lavasser showed us the Upper Peninsula for over 30 years. It's time for a look back. It's time for rediscovering. Now you see why it takes us so long. We visit all the, between targets. <laughs> Kept up on the beach. I like the flintlock. I started out, I think, five years ago with a cap lock, and um, I found a used flintlock at uh, Wilderness Sports in Ishpeming for a pretty cheap price, and uh, started started doing that and familiarizing myself with it. Uh, I since pur purchased a, uh, a custom long rifle off uh, um, a source online, and um, you got a good lock. A lock is the is the uh, the key ingredient to a flint lock. If you got a, a cheap lock, you're, you're going to have a real frustrating day. Cap guns aren't so fussy, but uh, yeah, quite a few flint lock shooters here today, and and you don't find that so often uh, in the UP. Most guys are are cap shooters, and uh, most guys are hunters. Clint Colick of Ishpeming is the UP's current muzzleloading champion, and he was one of about a dozen black powder enthusiasts who participated in the fifth annual Listening Inns Shoe and Shoot this weekend in Amasaw. Up next, we'll take a look at that event. Plus, more news regarding a very old doe I featured last winter, and the ice caves in the east channel of Munising are no longer accessible this winter, unless you have a boat. Plus, we'll take a look back at a UP native who has made a big name for himself. So stick around. It's Monday night, time for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still These are what I treasure the only way I measure Feelings that I have for this fine land There is so much to discover When you're a long-time lover Of northern Michigan Discovering is brought to you in part by 906 Outdoors Cooking Wild Seasonings. Hi everybody, welcome to Discovering. What a beautiful weekend we just experienced. Quite a thaw. You know it's good for the white-tailed deer and we'll talk about that in a few moments but you know the warm temperatures deteriorate a lot of winter activities but there were still lots of folks out and I traveled over to Amasaw to the listening in where a group of black powder enthusiasts were enjoying the fifth annual shoe and shoot take a look The Listening Inn in Amasaw is a bed and breakfast that provides a true Upper Peninsula atmosphere. Owners Carol and Les Kufal have been working hard to get the word out that the inn provides a beautiful setting for many outdoor events. Uh, the Listening Inn was, was a dream of my wife's and uh, just trying to make it happen. It's, it's a, it's a beautiful bed and breakfast here. We have 560 acres and we have cross country trails and snowshoe. And summertime we do canoe trips and uh, the hiking trails. And for the folks that have problems getting around, we got a couple golf carts and they can run the trails and enjoy our, our land.
Well, we actually, uh, some friends of mine when I lived in Wisconsin, we, uh, we started a, a deal at my cabin called White Smoke and Snowshoes. And uh, I knew that those guys were going to keep, keep on doing the woods walk and stuff, so I let them use that particular name. And then I moved up here and, and I figured, well, why not do the same thing? So it's just a shoe and shoe. Okay. So, but I've been doing it for a good many years. There's, uh, what, about 17 targets, I think? We had 17 this time, yep. Yeah, that's quite a bit. It's quite a hike for these guys. Well, I cut it down from last year. I had 24 last year. <laughs> so, it was, yeah, it's a good time. Everybody enjoys it. Well, what's the object of this? Is there, are there prizes? Or? Well, what we do here is no money is actually switched. Um, it's a blanket prize situation. Everybody that comes to shoot on the course brings a blanket prize worth 10 to $15. And when we get done with the shoot and we found out, find out who the top scorer is, he is the first one to be able to take a prize off the blanket and second place, third place. That way everybody goes home with something. Cool. So. And, uh, there's, uh, there's some pretty good shooters here today. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll put a lot of shooters, black powder shooters, against some of the best on, on regular conventional rifles, out to a certain yardage. Mm -hmm. These guys know their guns and they know how to use them. But this is just round ball and open sights, no scopes. No scopes and no sabots, no plastic, you know, to, to leave it in the environment. Uh, a solid lead slug is okay, but most of the guys here use a patch and round ball. visit all between targets. <laughs> Catch up on in the, in the individual tubes and it didn't oh. work at all. No way. I put the bottom of my gas tank. But I haven't lost my paper and I haven't lost my pencil yet. I think I got all my gear. So still a good day. One, two, three, four. Well, as mentioned, some of the shooters are using a percussion cap gun, while others are using the traditional flintlock. One of those is the current UP muzzle-loading champion, Clint Colick of Ishpeming. We meet up in Baraga, that's our home range. Um, numbers are down, we'd like to get some more people involved, but uh, typically we have a three-day rendezvous, uh, last full weekend in July, and um, shoot uh, paper targets for score. And we have hawk and knife and uh, fire starting events, and uh, women have their own category. Uh, we also have uh, pistol events. Uh, Les has been putting this uh, woods walk on for, I think, four years now, and it's always a great event. He has a real good selection of targets, some pretty difficult mm -hmm. ones, and uh, some that, you know, everybody pretty much can hit, keep, keep the interest level up. He lays the course out differently each year, so it's always interesting. And, Good Lord's blessed us with a terrific day. You, you couldn't ask for any more than this. Now we got good food inside, so, you know, minimal cost and a, just a terrific day. I like the flint lock. I started out, I think, five years ago with a cap lock, and um, I found a used flint lock at uh, Wilderness Sports in Ishpeming for a pretty cheap price, and uh, started started doing that and familiarizing myself with it. Uh, I since pur purchased a, uh, a custom long rifle off uh, um, a source online. And um, you got a good lock. A lock is the is the uh, the key ingredient to a flint lock. If you got a, a cheap lock, you're, you're going to have a real frustrating day. Cap guns aren't so fussy, but uh, yeah, quite a few flint lock shooters here today. And and you don't find that so often uh, in the UP. Most guys are are cap shooters, and uh, most guys are hunters. So uh, they'll come out to the range once in a while just to play with their guns, keep familiar with them. Um, we like to get dressed up and play. It's the only thing you can do would be like an eight-year-old kid again and go out and play, yeah. you know, cowboys and Indians yeah. sort of. So. Yeah. Well, what does it take uh, to win that? Is it a, is it a, a multi-day shoot and you shoot obviously round ball? Patch round patch, ball only. Yeah. Open yep. open uh, metallic sights. 
Uh, what does it take? It takes um, it takes pretty much a perfect date or some some real good shooters, and um, you you have to be just sort of in a zone that day, and you you can't afford any any bad shots. Uh, and even today, um, there's probably a number of good shooters here today. I don't know what it'll take to win this, but uh, I know at the UPs there there's. Uh, three or four or five guys that are capable of winning any given year so will you say that uh, your home uh, range is uh, with the Ottawa Sportsman's Club correct America? correct when, when do you guys get together so if someone is interested and would like to uh, maybe get a little more information or come out and see what you guys are doing sure we, we'd, we'd love to have you come out and, and watch and there's always guys that, that are willing to let you use their gun uh, if you don't have one um, we shoot the first Saturday of every month um, I think we start 11 o'clock up there uh, rain, shine, snowstorm, blizzard, anything. John Hinkle, who uh, who always hosts the shoot up there, says we're Upers, and brother, regardless of the weather, he's holding the shoot. So, uh, if you're ever interested, come on out. Um, you, you don't have to participate if you just want to watch the first time. Uh, if you want to try a gun, anybody would be glad to let you do that, and then we'll get tell you everything you need to get set up and come and shoot. You don't even have to be a member of uh, of the UPMLA or that. Barriga Club, uh, three dollar range fee, and if you want to stick around for lunch, they always have a terrific lunch afterwards for three bucks. So six dollars will give you a great afternoon. The Listening Inn is located just west of Amasaw off Highway 141. For more info, you can call Lesser Carroll at 906-822-7738. Well, coming up next, the late winter thaw has arrived. It's spoiling one outdoor activity, but it's great for the white-tailed deer. I'll have an update on doe number 108. She's getting up there in age, but still looking terrific. Stay tuned. Deer trap and tag programs have been going on in the UP for over 15 years. UP Whitetails has been the leader in tagging to learn more about migration patterns unique to this region. Well, last week I heard from Pete Jandro of Rapid River. Now, Pete said he had a big doe with twin fawns coming to his house located on the edge of a deer yard. The doe had a green tag, number 108. He checked the records and was surprised when he learned when that doe was tagged. You know, we started the tagging project to uh, follow the migration of the deer. And uh, so I'm not quite sure how many years we did it, but we got a lot of tagged deer out there. And uh, the one we got here now is, uh, it's a female. It's a green tag, which is the Whitefish River system, the yard. And uh, this, uh, this doe was tagged in... Uh, February 17th of, uh, of 1992. Well, that report was from January 2006. Now, Pete called me recently to tell me that doe number 108 is back, looking healthy, in fact, better than last year. That means this summer she will be 16 years old. Now, here's some new information. Doe number 108 spends the summer months on County Road 440, one mile west of Federal Forest Highway 13. Ernie and Jenny King of Munising said doe number 108 would come to their former home each summer from 1992 until they moved in 2000. Jenny said the doe would bring in its fawns each summer, who regularly dined on their vegetable garden of carrots and cabbages. The remarkable thing is that she always had fawns, even last year, which is a real tribute to the intelligence and stamina of the female white-tailed deer. Now, if you see number 108 this summer, just remember, she's a great, 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 well, you get the picture, grandmother, and one fine example of UP white-tailed deer. Each 
each winter I try and make a pilgrimage to the East Channel side of Grand Island for a look at the spectacular ice caves. Greg Pond of Grand Island Sled Rentals said, because of the late start to winter, the caves were only accessible for a couple of weeks. The ice formations, which are different each year, began to fall with the recent thaw and sunshine and added that the formations are now surrounded by open water. Vinny, what kind of year has it been uh, as far as the ice caves in the East Channel? Well, when the ice when it was here was really great. It was nice and safe, but uh, it was pretty fleeting because uh, it was sound when it was here, but then it left, and, and uh, it left pretty quick. It was uh, one day good, the next day bad, you know. And uh, you got to be real careful on the on the lake about ice. And uh, it was it was good for two weeks good to get all weeks. the way across. You to know. get all the way across, it was good for two weeks. Yeah. What is uh, every year? It's different, isn't it? You know, uh, some years you can't you can't go across, uh, and and some years you might you might have a, a lot larger window. But uh, well, this year it was it was it was good when it was here, but it was pretty short, pretty short. Mm -hmm. And now you wouldn't recommend anybody going out. I wouldn't recommend anybody going out right now. No, no, it's it's too soupy out there. Yeah, and we're hearing a lot of snowmobiles right now. Uh, there's a race going on, but they're all right in. Yeah, they're very sticking close to, the to the shoreline. Yeah, they're sticking to the shoreline where a lot of the pack ice has, has kept it. You know, it's sound and safe right there next to the shoreline. But uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't go anywhere anywhere uh, anywhere far offshore. Now, why do you like to? Uh, you, the adventure to go out there is something that a lot of people you like to go out there obviously oh yeah it's one of my favorite places to go if it's not if it's not the ice caves i'm spoiled though because i'm a local if it's not the ice caves i like to go to the kingston plains yeah. well if you'd like to view some cool photos of this year's ice caves you can go to grandsledrentals.com and click on to the grand sled ice caves or you can call one eight seven seven love snow. Well, up next, a man familiar to Alger County residents, Dayton O'Hyde. Stay tuned. Be sure to check out the 906 Outdoor Show, Sunday mornings at 7 Central, 8 Eastern on Fox UP. Every now and then, as an excuse to come back, I... I try to come up with a plot that involves Lake Superior or ore boats or whatever because I love this country and I was born here 80 years ago and I've never gotten over my love for it. There's no place on earth like this, this place and I hope people understand that and take care of it. Back in the early 1980s, I first met author and Marquette native Dayton Hawk Hyde. Dayton ran away from home at age 13 to become a cowboy, and he's never looked back. His latest book, The Pastures of Beyond, is an autobiography of his life in the rodeo world and his passion to save wild horses as founder and owner of the Black Hills Wild Horse Sanctuary in Hot Springs, South Dakota. And then outside the ranch there were a lot of wild horses that we would catch in the snow and, and uh, break. And, and uh, it wasn't very long before I, I got to wondering just how good a bronc rider I was. And I finally started a rodeo and then became a rodeo clown and fought Brahma bulls. And, and, uh, but I would always have a sense of how far that was away from Marquette. Yeah, well, you started in Oregon, right? That is about yeah, as far as you can yeah, get. Yeah, yeah. If I'd gone much further, I'd have gotten wet in the ocean, I guess. <laughs> it's been a great trip, this life. <laughs> well, then you moved a little bit east to, then to I, Dakotas. I uh, was down buying cattle in northern Nevada in Lovelock and saw 2,000 head of wild horses and government feedlots that they'd captured and had no place to go with them. And uh, I just uh, grew up with wild horses on that ranch and loved them and knew that I was the guy who was going to have to make some changes. So I turned the ranch over to my kids and went back to Washington and finally Congress gave me the okay to start a sanctuary. And 
I found an 11,000 acre piece of wonderful land in South Dakota and uh, the governor had heard that he'd read some of my books and and uh, knew that I'd do a good job of that land so he encouraged me to come in and take it over and run wild horses there and it's been a, a great success. I became a clown and rodeo bullfighter and when you do that you're saving world champions, you're saving some of the top cowboys and it, it uh, gave me a lot of acceptance because you know you're out there risking your life to save theirs and Slim Pickens became one of my best friends and we traveled together and fought bulls and clowned in places like the cow, San Francisco Cow Palace and, and uh, it gave me enough money in those days to go to college and, and, uh, and uh, but more than that it gave me a lot of experience and in all those years I accumulated a lot of wonderful stories some from people that never even had an obituary and uh, I got pretty nervous in my old age uh, thinking that maybe I'd die and take those stories with me but now I've got them written in a book they're all told and and the, the value of the stories is maybe that I was there when they happened and you can read about how by accident Slim Pickens got the nod to go to Hollywood instead of Dayton, and the rest is history. It's The Pastures of Beyond by Dayton O'Hyde, who has many other books out with UP ties. Check them out at your local library. Until next week, Buck Lavasser saying, get out and enjoy the great winter outdoors. <laughs>